Our second lesson in Module 5, Lesson 1, is on writing equations from a graph. And our goal in this lesson is to identify the slope and y-intercept from a graph and use those values to write the equations of that line in slope-intercept form. And nothing in this lesson is really new to us. These are all skills that we should already know how to do uh, back from what we learned in Module 4, but it's just a matter of kind of tying it all together. So we have some steps. Um, yesterday's lesson had five steps, and some of them were a little complex. Today's lesson, we only have three steps, and all of them are a little bit easier than yesterday. So hopefully this lesson will go a little bit easier than 5.1a did. So here's the steps below. So again, three steps. Our first step is to find the slope of the line. So we're going to be dealing with graphs. And so when we're dealing with the graph of a line, <clears throat> in order to find the slope, we want to use m is equal to rise over run. Now, if you wanted, you, you can identify individual points on the graph, and then you use m is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Uh, to me, that's more work. I like using rise over run when I'm dealing with the graph of a line. Second step we want to take is we want to find the y-intercept by counting how many units the origin is from the line crossing the x, the, I'm sorry, the y-axis. So again, essentially what we're doing here, starting at the origin, and we either count straight up or straight down until we get to the point where the line and the y-axis meet, and that is going to be the value for b or the y-intercept. And then finally, uh, our third step is to actually write the equation. We want to substitute the values for slope and y-intercept into slope-intercept form, which is y equals mx plus b. So we'll take our value for m that we found in step 1 and our value for b that we found in step 2 and replace and substitute those values in for m and b into y equals mx plus b to get our equation. All right, let's take a look at a couple examples to see how this can be done. I'll go ahead and pause the video to finish writing the steps first. For our first example, we have a movie club charges a one-time membership fee plus a rental fee for each movie borrowed. The graph shows the amount spent, y, for movies rented, x. Use the graph to write the equation. Okay, so the first thing that we have to do here is identify the slope. Um, before we do that, before we get on to actually looking at this graph, there's something that I want to point out to you guys. And that's this little symbol right here. Now, I call that a break in the graph. Essentially what it does is it skips the values from zero up until the value, the first value that you have here, uh, just as a way to save space on a graph. You may only use one of them per axis. So we have one right here. And so we skip all this information from zero up to eight. It also has to be used in between, or it also has to be used next to the origin. You can't put a break in the graph like just some random place on the axis. It has to be right next to the origin if you're going to use a break in the graph. Okay? So just wanted to point that out first. Now, when it comes to finding the slope, we want to use m is equal to rise over run. So we identify our two points. We have a point right here, and we have a point right here. And so what we're going to do, we want to start at the point that's further to the left. If we remember back to module 3, when we were learning about slope, we want to start at the point that's further to the left. So we're going to start right here, and from there, we have to count up or down until we get to, until we get to even or level with the other point. So from here, we're going to count up until we get right here, which is level with the other point. So our rise is going to be 8. I'm sorry, we're actually going up 10 there, so our rise is going to be 10. So we start with m is equal to, our rise is 10, going from 8 up to 18, gives us 10. And then for our run, again, we continue from here until we get level or even to the point that we want to end up at, and that value is going to be 8. Okay? Now, obviously, that's not simplified, so our slope is going to be Use a different color. M is going to be equal to 5 over 4. Okay? So that's our value for our slope. And usually I have one right on the graph like this, like what I'm doing, but I don't have any more room on my paper. So I would encourage you guys to write below 
um, right below the problem just so that you aren't uh, messing up your graph or anything like that. Okay, I'm going to keep writing on the graph just because it's the only place I left to write. So that's our first step, finding our slope, which is m is equal to 5 over 4. Now for my next step, I want to find the y-intercept. So to find my y-intercept, again, I want to trace the line until I get to even with the y-axis. So my y-intercept is this point right here. And so we want to count up from the origin until we get to until we get to that value. Well, it kind of makes it tricky to count with this break in the graph, but we see that our value here is going to be 8, and since our line crosses the graph where our y value is 8, we know that the value for our y-intercept is going to be 8. Okay, that's all. All we have to do is find where the line crosses the y-axis to identify the y-intercept. So now we're going to write our equation. We have our slope here. We have our y-intercept here. So our equation is going to be y is equal to, in place of m, we'll use 5 over 4. And then instead of b, we'll use 8. Oops, I forgot the x. y is equal to 5 fourths x plus 8. And that is it. That's our equation for this graph. For our second example, we're just given the image of a graph, and we're told to write the equation of the graph below. So again, two things we want to identify. We want to identify the slope, and we want to identify the y-intercept. Okay. So for our slope, we want to start at a point that's further to the left. So we could start at this point here, or we could start at this point here, but we don't want to start at the point that's all the way to the right. Okay. Now from either one of those points, I'm going to choose this point as my starting point. From that point, I need to ask myself, all right, do I need to go up or do I need to go down until I'm level with this next point? Well, obviously I need to go up, so I'm going to just going to show that in green. You don't have to write this on your notes if you don't want, but I'm just going to show us going up one. That's going to be our value for our, our rise. And because we go up one, I'm going to give that a value of plus one. If we were going down one, I would give that a value of minus one. Okay, so now from that, from the point where that line just ended, I'm going to go over to the right. That's going to be the value for my run, and because it's three units to the right, I'm going to give that a value of plus three. So now my slope is rise over run. One is the value for my rise, so it's one over three is the value for my slope. Now for my y-intercept, I trace the line until I get to the point where it crosses the y-axis, and I count down from the origin in this case until I get to that point. So I start at the origin, and I count down 1, 2. Because I count down 2, my y-intercept has a value of negative 2. And so my equation of this line is going to be y is equal to 1 third x, minus 2. And that's it. That's all we're doing for these graphs. Let's take a look at one more like that. All right, for our last example, again, we want to write the equation of the graph below. So we're given this graph here, two things to identify. We want to identify the slope again and the y-intercept. Now for the slope, we choose, we can choose any one of these points except the one that's furthest to the right. I like to choose the point that's furthest to the left. That's just me. And so from that point all the way to the left, I have to ask myself, from here, do I want to rise up or do I rise down until I'm level with my other point? Well, obviously I want to rise down. And since I go down one unit, I'm going to give that a value of negative 1. And then I'm just going to go to the right 1. And so I'll give that a value of plus 1. My slope then has a value of negative 1 over 1. And now tip, typically we want to simplify our slope if we can. Um, there's not really much we can do to simplify that, so I'm okay if you use negative 1 over 1. Um, but we could write it as m is equal to negative 1 instead. Okay? Um, either one of those is fine. When graphing, I would probably encourage you to go with this one. When writing an equation, it might be better to go with this one, though. 
Okay, personal preference, leaving it up to you. Now for our y-intercept, we simply want to identify the point where the line and the y-axis intersect. So if we trace along our line, we get to the point where the line and the y-axis intersect right here. And so we want to count up until from the origin until we get to this point. So starting at the origin, we count up 1, 2, 3, 4. And so we're since we're going up 4, our y-intercept is going to have a value of positive 4. All right. So now we've identified our slope and our y-intercept. Now it's time to write the equation. So we would have y is equal to negative 1 over 1 x plus 4. All right, and now having the negative 1 over 1 in front of the x is good for, good for identifying slope, but not necessarily as part of the equation. We don't need the, nu the numerator or denominator there because they're both at the have a value of 1. So the actual way that we would write this equation would simply be y is equal to negative x plus 4. All right, if I were giving you a handwritten copy of a quiz or test and you gave me this for an answer, I would not mark it wrong. My H or W, on the other hand, they might want their answer to look like this, however. Okay, so I just wanted to point that out to you guys. All right, so that's what all we've got for, for this lesson. Again, just the three quick examples. Uh, when I check in your notes, I do want to see all the graphs and all the writing that you had to do for this lesson. And I'm hoping that now we can meet the goal of identifying the slope and y-intercept from a graph and use those values to write the equation in slope-intercept form. If you have any questions, uh, write them down and make sure to ask during class.